So hello everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining us, especially on a rainy day. I didn't expect to see so many people, so uh, thanks a lot for making the effort, and I hope uh, the discussion is valuable. So as you know, we're going to talk about customer success, which is a topic that's close to my heart because I look after the customer success team for EMEA at Algolia. And um, I was curious to know why people were um, interested in listening to this topic because I know that uh, uh, there's a lot of diversity in the people who've come today. Uh, there's some technical uh, people, people who work more closely to customer success and account management. And ha after chatting to a couple of you, it looks like um, some of you are interested in knowing what customer success is because it, it's not a function that exists at your company. Others uh, have it and are interested in learning about best practices. So we're going to cover all of that uh, with three amazing guest speakers that are joining us today to share their experience. Uh, and just before we start, um, I just want to share one fact, which for me illustrates why customer success is an important function that every company should invest in. I'm not biased, I promise. Um, it is seven times more costly to acquire customers than to retain customers. That means that if you don't invest in retaining customers and making them loyal and happy, you're potentially capping yourself to only reach 16% of your total potential. So what we're going to talk about with the three guest speakers we have today is what customer success is, uh, what are um, the, uh, the the ingredients for making it successful. Uh, what are the different the differences? Because we have people uh, representing very different mm -hmm. companies, um, and I'll be moderating the discussion in the beginning. But please keep any questions that come to mind because we'll open up uh, the discussion to your questions towards the end. So I'm very happy to welcome on stage um, three or, or three guest speakers. So Ines. Uh, please come in. Uh, Ines um, represents the customer success team uh, at Microsoft. Please give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Wissam is a customer success manager at LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> and Sarai represents the customer success function at Algolia. So before we start, I think it's good to align on the definition of customer success. And I'd like to ask each of you to share, um, in your opinion, uh, what is the purpose of the customer success team? And also because um, uh, people don't know necessarily uh, what you work on, please feel free to share um, the, the, the product you're working on and how it works at your specific company. Um, Ines, do you want to start? So hello. Um, so I'm working in Microsoft as a customer success manager for major accounts. So uh, we have two types of, uh, uh, of CSMs. The pooled, they are working on uh, 15 different accounts, smaller one. And you have engaged uh, CSM. They are working on three or four major accounts. Um, why CSM in Microsoft? Uh, it's a brand new uh, role um, from for now two years in Microsoft. Um, because in fact, when you turn from on-premise to cloud, um, the idea is to uh, accompany the customer on his uh, value realization uh, because when you're on the cloud, you can very easily shift to a competitor. It's like when you're using uh, Deezer, 
you can go to Spotify very easily. You ha just have to um, quit your um, uh, fee. So the idea is when you work for a tech company now, uh, you uh, help the customer to uh, use the products to achieve, to be more successful, to achieve his goals and challenges. So this is why CSMs have been created in Microsoft. Thanks for sharing. Wissam? Yes, so uh, my name is Wissam. I work at LinkedIn. I'm customer success manager for global accounts. At LinkedIn, we have different business lines. I am aligned to the what we call the sales solutions business lines. So uh, we normally work with uh, sales organizations to transform the way they go to market and sell, uh, adopting a new and modern sales approach. So um, for me and for us in this organization, customer success is about delivering um, customer delight and customer value at scale. And when we talk about delight, it's more about the customer experience. When we talk about value, it's more about the ROI and the return uh, that they have on their inv investment. And for us, the main focus and the way we think about customer success is that our function is to focus and to own the retention of clients. And this in turn will enable the sales team to own the renewal and the growth of existing customers. So this is how we split between the two. And uh, I think we'll have more time to talk about the specifics of what we do and how we do it. But yeah, this is a brief of uh, customer success, at least at LinkedIn. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Sarai, working as a CSM at Algoria. So uh, compared to the to the two way they describe how the CSM is working, uh, we have a bit of a different way to uh, to guide the clients because we have a source such solution, which means that we empower the technical audience to set up uh, their uh, solution, online solution to an API, and we provide a search experience to their end users. So this means that we have to guide for us uh, the client in making the search experience something valuable for us, uh, having a go live, a technical setup, which is valuable, and for sure, guide them in new projects and making sure they renew in the end. Uh, to guide them throughout the, the entire uh, process of using the solution. Very clear. And it looks like your three definitions are very aligned because I've heard a lot about value, customer success, um, uh, meeting objectives, and retaining customers. So that seems to be a constant here across different companies. Now I'm keen to hear about what in your day-to-day uh, you prioritize to be able to achieve this mission. So what are your your priorities? What do you feel uh, are the most important activities you need to um, achieve, perform, to be able to achieve your mission? Should I start? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the day-to-day -day challenge, because I was telling you about how technical the product is, we really need to understand uh, why our users are using the solution, uh, how we can make them adopt the features, adopt the tool, um, evangelize the, the solution throughout the entire company we, because we are talking to a wide range of customers, meaning from technical to e-commerce to um, marketing. So uh, this is how we should prioritize the way we talk to clients, making sure that uh, if they have any question, uh, any issues, we are here for them, how we can they can grow from their day-to-day -day usage to something new, to something that they could explore, uh, how they can expand with the solution with us. Uh, and yeah, in the longer term, this is uh, how we, we would be doing. I will add maybe a couple of things to what you just said, Sarai. Um, for us, because the product that we propose is not that complex, that not that technical, so the focus will be more on customer experience, as I said, and customer outcomes. So for the customer experience, the big part of what we do is trying to understand the customer, what they do, what are their objectives, uh, how they operate, and see how we can align to what, what they want to achieve. So this is, this is how we, we think. If we have this un deep understanding, deep knowledge of the customer, we can align on and deliver a great experience. Uh, the other part of our priorities is the uh, customer outcomes. 
And for this, again, uh, it's very important for us to align on what are the objectives and what success look like for, for, for every customer. So it will, it will be different depending on the customers. So alignment is very important. And then on top of that, also align on the path to achieve ROI. How are we gonna go uh, from you know, launching the product or launching the deployment and then transition to slowly uh, starting to get return on investment. Uh, so when we start in the, in the program or deploying something, we'll look at metrics that are different from what we look at two years in or just before the renewal. So these are the two biggest areas that we focus on and you know, we spend m most of our time working on this and in this path, we, uh, in this path, we, uh, we also use um, our connection, our uh, proximity to the client to uh, create more uh, connections and relationships with decision makers. And this will help in the sales approach later on in the, in the process. So um, to complete, I'm going to uh, make a, uh, explain a case, a use case maybe. Um, we're going to take the example of a big beauty tech company, uh, worldwide known, French one. Um, and uh, when uh, we start with the account, uh, we know that they have bought some licenses, uh, licenses to equip all the employees in the world uh, to be more collaborative, using Teams, using Yammer, using uh, SharePoint, all the suite, O365 suite. So the idea is to, to really, the first uh, step is really to understand the business and to understand what are their goals, uh, the business goals, and also the human, the employee uh, transformation, inside transformation, what they want to achieve in terms of employee uh, engagement, employee collaboration, uh, implo uh, user experience when they are doing a meeting, when they are on mobility. So this is what they want, what, what is their ambition? And one that we have worked on the ambition is how we're going to reach this ambition, uh, making, um, engaging all the employees to change their mindset and to change the way they work. So it's just not a tool, it's not just a tool, it's how we're going to uh, empower uh, the management and engage the collaborators to uh, change the way they are working together so they are going to be more effective and the experience is going to be much, um, how as we say, um, uh, sans couture, how we say that in English? Seamless. Seamless, a seamless experience. Thank you for sharing that. And actually, I want to jump on what she just said. You've just talked about change management, which is one of the challenges um, of the customer success team. Um, I'm keen to hear about how you handle change management and uh, what other challenges uh, belong to the customer success team so that people in the audience know also what they need to be wary of uh, when thinking about launching customer success. So in Microsoft, we have a methodolo methodology that is based on the ProSci certification, which is an American methodology for change management, based on seven pillars. Uh, the pillars, I'm going to uh, set some examples, are communication, training, uh, how, uh, what's in for me, it's uh, how you can leverage all the pains, the limitations that you can envision on in the company. But also, uh, one of the key pillars are the sponsor, the vision, and uh, the use cases. So, uh, because this is key. Uh, for which persona, for which people, what are the use cases that we're going to, um, to, to build on? to build for the company. So uh, the idea in change management is to work on all those pillars and to build a strategy, a global at scale strategy to uh, make all the people around the world use uh, be being able to, uh, to work on those use cases upon their job. 
For example, if I am a project manager, I will not have the same use cases as an exec from the company. And it will not be the same if I am in a, a first-line worker working in a plant. So we have to take into account all those differences and work on a global plan. Yeah, so it's about understanding all the people who will be involved, uh, their specific use cases, and adapting to those so that you can deliver something tailored for each of them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will add one thing. I think you know everything applies to what we do at LinkedIn. Uh, we are doing this transition of putting more focus on change management because this is the key uh, to have a successful um, partnership with the client. Uh, I will add just one thing. Uh, the pitfall that you always see is that uh, people or companies, they will see the tool as the end of the investment, whether we like to see it as an enabler. So we are investing in, a, uh, in an access to a tool that will enable something, but more, more, of, more, on the more, more of that is we are investing in the methodology and what the company can do to help us be successful. And this is where CSMs, We'll, we'll, we'll spend most of the time is how we can transition from an old way of doing things to a new way of doing things. And the tool is just one of the things that will be changed. It's not the only thing. And the biggest part and the most important part and the most critical one is people mindset. So how we can change the mindset. And this is where change management, people management is extremely important. Sarah, you want to sum up something? No, no, <laughs> no I'm, I'm keen to hear if you yeah. think that applies to Algoia Th too. That applies to Algoia uh, on some levels, but also the main challenges would be that we are all here as a CSM to actually retain, threaten the relationship we build with the client. But that's the external part, but there is a big, big part within the company that you guys are in at some point, is that you have to make the other squad, the other team, the other department understand that the main focus would be the customer. Uh, you should build the tool, you should uh, communicate, you should sell the tool for the customers. And uh, if you act as the voice of the customer, you are customer centric. This is where the whole change management will come into play. So, I mean, on top of what they already shared, this is something that we are in the process of doing at Algoia. We are still doing it, but this is something that is ongoing. Um, and uh, from the top management to uh, to any department. So uh, this is something you should think of. Yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Um, customer success doesn't sit just with the customer success team. Every function have an impact on uh, the customer satisfaction. And it is one of our challenges to be able to um, convince all of the departments in the company that we all need to be customer centric and think about customers first. And that's a great segue to my next question because I was gonna talk about collaboration with other teams because the customer success function typically collaborates a lot internally with different stakeholders. So I'm curious to know which functions do you collaborate with the most and what are the tips uh, to make that collaboration as effective as possible? Um, uh, at Algolia, we do collaborate with a lot of team, um, especially, I would say, because of the technicity of the technicality, sorry, of the tool, uh, we have a crew called field engineering. So these are uh, people who know how to code, understand the technical language and are uh, client facing. So we do work a lot with them and also for sure the sales team, which we are part of. Um, how I could um, sum it up quickly is that uh, we do actually need to understand who we're going to be talking to. So we need to have a summary, uh, ongoing collaboration with the sales team to understand, okay, you close the deal. Now we need to take over. We need to understand what were the pain points, what we can do to solve the, uh, the pain of the client who actually uh, bought the solution uh, uh, we are selling. And then on top of that, expand the usage, adopt the usage, so have all our team, um, the support team, the product team, to have a feedback loop, um, any other technical squad here uh, to help us achieve the success criteria and the goal of the customers. Um, and my 
two main tips would be that it's a lot of cooperation, collaboration, and communication. It's never enough to repeat, 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 repeat again and again things. It's always better to say a bit more than not to say anything. I think you, you laid it uh, very well. Uh, it's almost the same. So again, it's not that technical at LinkedIn, so we don't have this technical um, uh, collaboration with the, the technical team. I, th I would say the most the critical one is um, the sales team, whether it is before, so pre-sales before selling or after the sale is done. Uh, before selling, it's more to make sure that the contract or the partnership is set up for success because we bring the expertise on how we can make it happen. And after selling, it's obvious because we want them to be successful. Um, the other thing that we have at LinkedIn, so LinkedIn is, um, I hope that everyone here is on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is, a, um, is a, of course, a social network, professional social network, but on top of that is a data company. So you have a lot of data, uh, and we can use this data to pro prove value, prove them, uh, give, give insights on areas where the clients find uh, find interest. So we work with what we call at LinkedIn the insights analysts. So people who will uh, work with us to create a narrative to showcase or to prove value or to showcase a missed opportunity that will help either accelerate uh, a conversation that is going or maybe penetrate different uh, departments or prove that the, work, the product is working and that they need to invest more. So in Microsoft, we're working uh, in account teams. So as I have three major accounts, I, I am working very, very closely with three account teams. As they are global accounts, those account teams are uh, from 15 to 30 people around the world. So as a CSM, I have uh, orchestration coordination uh, topic which is very important at, as to scale and to synchronize and to communicate to everyone. And I'm working closely with the executive uh, account manager of the account on the business side to um, engage the businesses into the account, but also with the technical people because they are going really to accelerate the onboarding of the technical uh, people and also uh, work on the blockers. Um, and I will also work with the sales uh, because more and more uh, the CSM, uh, as he is um, when he's uh, well implanted on the customer in the customer, uh, he's also uh, a good uh, person to leverage the opportunities. So as the customer is, uh, we're creating a, a good uh, intimacy with the customer. Um, a lot of. Uh, opportunities are going to come from us to the sales. So uh, we try to work very, very close with the salespeople. Um, and also the marketing, because it's very, very important. As we are representing the voice of the customer in Microsoft, we work with the market marketing and also the engineering team, talking on new products like Teams. Uh, we leverage a lot of uh, new features uh, to the engineering teams. Yeah, absolutely. So we've heard um, that the CS function collaborates a lot with the sales team to make sure that we understand customer needs and we can grow the partnerships with our customers. Uh, there's also a strong collaboration with technical um, roles, especially uh, with the technical product. And also, as you just mentioned, with marketing and engineering and product. And for me, that's key. It's tough to set, to set up that collaboration because uh, because it's it's not always easy for the product team to collaborate with a ton of uh, different functions they get a lot of feedback from everybody but uh, if we can get our voice heard that means uh, our customers needs are represented and i find that very valuable mm -hmm. just want to yeah of course um, i just forgot to also say that we do have also a partner team so i don't know in uh, guys in uh, which com size of company you guys are, but that's super important to have like um, third party vendors and uh, to understand how they can sell the, uh, the solution and how you guys can make, can have a voice within this uh, collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Partners are key to help us scale. Ah, of course. And um, 
And yeah, that's uh, another collaboration that's very important to build. Into. I just add one thing because uh, you mentioned uh, some tips that we can give, and I uh, maybe I didn't give a proper tip. Uh, and you mentioned that it's complex because we are collaborating with a lot of departments, a lot of roles. I think the one tip that I can give, and I think this is helping me every day, is invest in relationships internally. Um, and with it, with, with this comes communication. You know, it's very straightforward. It's easy. Everyone knows that this is important, but not everyone does it. Uh, so uh, don't think about it as spending time with other people on things that will not be helpful for you, but think about it as an investment in a relationship that will help you accelerate later on in, in your journey. Yeah, it's all about relationships, whether internally or externally, that's for sure. So customer success is a fairly recent function. However, it tends to evolve very rapidly over time and as companies grow. grow. So um, could you share your experience and whether at your company you've seen the customer success function evolve? And if so, how? So as I was saying, in Microsoft is quite new. Um, but uh, uh, within two years, um, we saw a lot of benefits of having this new function, uh, creating a customer intimacy, having uh, integrating them in the feedback loop of the product so that the product can really, really be shaped upon their needs and uh, also accelerate the value proposition of uh, Office 365 at our clients. Um, where we are going, uh, so we have two types of teams, as I said. So uh, for, the, um, for the big accounts, major accounts, so they have dedicated CSMs as I am. And for the others, they have so uh, one CSM for 15 accounts, but they also have a CSM factory, customer success factory, which is a way to scale up all the different change management topics uh, through uh, workshops. So for each customer, they can come and spend two days in Microsoft in France and, and uh, being uh, in those workshops and to work with other customers, so have feedbacks from other customers. So they are going to accelerate their onboarding on change management, adoption strategy, and they will work on their own plan. So um, we try to find some, some, um, some ways to accompany our different types of customers. And where we are going next year, uh, I, m f uh, CSMs are uh, going to be more technical. So we are asked to uh, pass some certifications. Uh, for example, administrator as an admin on O365, so that we can have also a good understanding of the technical side of the subject. And uh, also being able to, inside Microsoft, to infuse this customer uh, centricity to the rest of the teams. Because the idea is to, uh, as we are uh, very empathic uh, with the customer, is to bring this empathy in Microsoft and to uh, infuse it inside the, the account team. Uh, I will share a bit of um, how LinkedIn evol evolved on customer success. So I joined LinkedIn two years ago. Before I joined, the role did not was, was not called customer success. It was called more product consultants. So the focus was more like customer, this, this team was more product experts. They focus on features, on trainings, and making sure that the, the, the client is using the tool. So the focus was more on usage. And now we're slowly transitioning to a focus on value. Okay, where is the value? Is the, the client getting value from the investment they are doing? So we are customer success managers, obviously, and we are positioned, or we like to position ourselves as trusted advisors. So move on uh, a more consultative mode. So how, how they can achieve their success, how can, th how can we help them, what, what best looks like for them and how we can make it happen, and less on just the usage. The usage is important, but if we use without getting any value, it's, it's, it's irrelevant. Uh, the other thing that is, uh, I think we should think about customer success in terms of the um, 
life cycle of the company itself. When we start with a startup, uh, we will have a focus that is different from where we grow and where we want to maybe focus on different things. So right now at Sage Solutions, so where I work, uh, the business is growing very, very much. So the focus in, is transitioning from a um, model that is almost um, very one-to-one -to, -one to a model that is scaled. So how we can scale customer success, how we can serve everyone without uh, at the same time reducing the experience, and how we can uh, make the customer success focus more on being reactive rather than just, uh, sorry, proactive rather than just reactive. Uh, so higher value touch points compared to just you know any touch point. Yeah, so to complete on what uh, you both just said, we are exactly in the transition of uh, having this approach of like checking the, the usage of the tool towards a more value approach uh, vision, which means that I started one year ago at Algoria. Uh, the team is dispatched across the US and the EMEA, who are a team of 20 people. Uh, and the thing is that it's always changing, meaning that a few months ago, the way we were handling the accounts of the client were we have a level of support. So we, we will have a complete dedicated level of support when our team, I don't know, like good on site, uh, do what you want to do with uh, clients uh, paying. Uh, quite a lot of money so that we provide the value they need and fo focusing on the project and the usage of Usly and another level of support in which you make everything possible for the client to be satisfied with uh, what they expect from the tool, um, guiding them towards a go live. And then afterwards, they will have some kind of self-service. service. And then we are right now transitioning toward a one-to-one -one approach where we are keeping this kind of like high standard approach uh, meaning that uh, they get the value of what they are paying, they have a, an entire team dedicated for uh, what they want to do, uh, the product team uh, to, to have the view of the roadmap, integrate their own project, uh, anything that can come to mind and what we can build all together. And then uh, one to many approach in which is going to be based, sorry, I, I forgot to mention, on the ARR, so which means the, the value in terms of revenue that uh, they can bring. And so this one-to-many approach will be on the lower ARR and we will build some kind of automated desk in which they will have the uh, new customer to come uh, to us after having uh, checked the tool, understand the tool, maybe have some certification so that they can have access to our CSN team. So this is exactly on top of what you were saying, uh, going through this kind of usage uh, understanding of the tool to a more uh, value-driven approach. Yeah, and it looks like a common thread throughout what you said is that as companies grow, the customer success function needs to scale. And by that, uh, we mean finding ways to um, do things more efficiently so that we have more time to do things in a customized way with customers. So it's a balance to find between uh, creating processes that uh, make, um, that automate um, the way we interact with customers in some way so that we have more time to actually be more custom uh, in, in how we interact with them. So now um, I'm, I'm curious to know for the company, the people who represent companies which don't currently have a customer success function, which advice would you give them to ensure that that new team is set up for success? <laughs> it's a broad and difficult question. I don't think there's a perfect answer, but any tip would be appreciated. Uh, and as you think about your answer, um, I'm going to ask one more question and then open up uh, to the audience. So please start thinking about questions you have for the panel as well. Um, yeah, so to set up the context, I don't know you guys in which type of company you are, if it's like a small startup, a scale up, a big company, because it's all start from there actually, you need to understand like within the company, who is handling what? Meaning that do you have a sales team that is doing the onboarding? Do you have a support team or do or 
every one of you within the company to support, meaning that you answer questions from the client, or you need to understand the usability issue, the feature request, or anything that could improve the tool. If it's all messed up right now, it means that at some point, as you're growing, you might need to structure that, in meaning that you need to have a CSM crew. Uh, for sure, it all starts by, I would say, uh, thinking at my previous experience at a Spendex, which is a fintech, uh, in which we were at the beginning only 15. Uh, we were all doing some kind of support. The onboarding was handled by the sales team. And the way we actually structured that uh, was to um, understand the need of the client, communicate with a different team. So the advice would be that to understand that, you will need to have a bit of theory, meaning that you have to deep dive into the customer journey to understand what are the touch points, where your customers are, do they approach you at a certain point at the stage of the of the sales cycle, do, you, do they need to understand the, the product, the service that you're selling, uh, do they need to have someone to guide them to expand the usage of the tool, to expand the usage of the service? Do they need someone to help them renew the contract? So this is all come up this way. So you need to understand at which point they need to reach out to you. So you can set up alerts, use some tools uh, to do that. And also maybe uh, have a feedback loop to uh, make all your internal team aware of the desire of the customer. If they you need to invest into your product, into your service to uh, so that it meets the, the need of the customer, you need to prioritize that, we prioritize that. So obviously this all come up with some theory at the beginning to understand where you guys are going then. I will maybe add a couple of things. Um, <coughs> trying to take, so actually um, this is, you know, you, you, you mentioned this, this is an emerging role. This is a new, uh, function and uh, and it started with the with the tech industry, so it's a new function. Um, and you will look at companies; no single, no two companies do it the same way. Uh, and then no one has the perfect answer, right? So um, there are a couple of ways and multiple ways to do this. The only thing that it doesn't change is that um, change will happen. Uh, the industry is changing, the role is changing, so we need to be agile. We need to be uh, to have this mindset that change will happen. We need to adapt to it and maybe get ahead of it. I think this will be the, the number one maybe mindset to have in mind. The other thing is that we talked a lot about customer outcomes, customer value. If you cannot measure this, you will not be able to prove it. So keep this in mind when you build a customer success org, uh, make sure that you can measure, capture the right data points and measure everything you need to prove success throughout the life cycle, life cycle of the customer. Um, so creating a new CSM crew in a company, my advice would be, um, as uh, the, uh, everything is changing very rapidly, we have to, the idea is to really uh, accompany the customers on this changing journey, change journey. So a lot of them are facing the transformation, digital transformation, but they don't know how to work it out. So they need to have uh, an advisor, a coach, someone that they can rely on that is going to help them to put in place this journey for all their employees. So I think for a company it's key because you create, um, this role is going to be in the center of uh, the company, inside your company, in the team. But also, he will, so he will bring all the customer uh, experience context to help, for example, the product team to adjust the product, the marketing team to adjust the marketing campaign. And so it's, a, uh, it's creating a real strong partnership between uh, your company and the customer and to co-develop. The idea is really to partner the the um, the more uh, up level you can at the CXO level, partnering even on the innovation phase, on the products to really um, be uh, helping the customers when they are envisioning their new step, co-build with them the tools that is going to help them uh, achieve this step. Yeah, and a couple of highlights here. Um, 
if you want to have a successful customer success function, it looks like you need to be ready for change. Uh, a feedback loop is helpful because that helps you know how you need to change and how to iterate. And it's very important to measure things you do. And actually, um, uh, following up on that topic, um, I'm curious to know which metric you use to measure the success of the CS team. So, you know, we, we talk about uh, KPIs, basically. What are the KPIs for your function? Of the customer success yes. org? Uh, so it's a great point, actually, a uh, great question. We are currently rethinking everything that we do and how we want to incentivize and measure the effectiveness, effectiveness of customer success. Right now, what we do is we try to have an index that um, shows us with one number what's the health of, uh, of the client. Okay, what we want to add to this is um, a metric that shows the value that is provided and something that is more qualitative, like maybe the um, NPS score or customer satisfaction score, something that will give the voice of the customer, not just metrics that we see on our side, but what the customer sees on their end. So, but, but we are right now transitioning, so I'm curious to see what the others have to say. <laughs> so as a CSM, I have different uh, uh, topics, uh, metrics. So the first one is the, the I have a, so a target on each of my accounts in terms of uh, licensed uh, that are going to be used by the, by the employees. So the idea is really to, m to work on a strategic adoption plan so that a lot of people in the company are going to use the tool for the right purpose. Uh, the second topic is to be able to uh, make some testimonies from the customer because the customer is happy. So he's, uh, he's likely to uh, testimony on the use on the, on, on the benefits of the product. Uh, and the third topic would be the power map. So uh, the influence map, uh, the, 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 uh, the way we, we, we uh, partner and we collaborate and we work with uh, different levels of uh, people into the customer uh, company. Uh, yes, to add on, on to what you just said, so we have exactly the same vision. So it's um, it's more uh, driven towards the how they adopt the features, how we are successful in retaining and uh, strengthening the relationship that we have. We have uh, our own initiatives, part of our crew here. We have uh, someone part of the CSM taking care of the what we call the CSM operation. So we built some dashboards, so you can do it uh, by yourself, or if you have a team for that, or you can incorporate that to a tool. We decided to incorporate that into Salesforce on our end. So if you use any other tool, feel free to have something uh, in-house. And we uh, monitor, obviously, uh, the adoption of the tool. Uh, we make sure that uh, the contract <coughs> renewed accordingly so that we can spot any issue when it comes to the billing or the legal. Um, and in terms of KPI, uh, we don't have a health score uh, yet. Uh, on the sales side, they do monitor the attractiveness. Yes, it's not good to say that. <laughs> we're growing. But we're growing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, just so you know, we were using before a um, CRM called Tutango, and now we are migrating everything into Salesforce. Uh, but just so you know, there is no good or bad practices. You do the way you want, but it's always good to have some metrics, a lot to understand where you are at, uh, why, where the customers are at, to actually spot any issues. If they are, I don't know, like running away from uh, your service, your product, to understand where the gap are. So that's usually uh, how we would uh, be performing. And so we review the accounts. And something that we do here at Algoria is that Whenever we spot that, when we read the metrics online, we do have some red account session, big words for big session, uh, that are handled by our top management. So as I was telling you before, a lot of communication throughout the whole teams, that they are aware of an issue from a client that we were able to spot thanks to our own internal KPIs. And we are, this is session where we are brainstorming on how to solve the issue, on how to uh, escalate something that we we could uh, we could have been forecasted, or we thanks to the KPIs. So this is something that uh, we do. So I didn't forget anything. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And that was one topic that I knew we would have quite uh, different answers because there is no consensus yet on what the right KPI should be. They're obviously all about satisfaction, retention, usage, adoption, health, customer health. So all of that are obviously metrics that matter a lot to customer success. I have one final question before opening up. Um, there are maybe some people in the room who are interested in joining a customer success team. And so for them, I'd love you to share advice on how to be successful as a customer success manager. Uh, yeah, I think so. First, if you are considering this, go for it. <laughs> Um, it's funny, so LinkedIn, as I said, company, we have a lot of data. Um, we recently launched a top, top emerging roles. Customer success is one of the top 10. It's actually number six, I think. Uh, and the career progression is very promising for customer success uh, uh, professionals. So if you are hesitating, if you are thinking about it, uh, go for it. I think it will be useful for later. And the skill set that you can create and build and develop will be extremely useful for anything else that you will do later on, whether it is customer success or, or leadership role or anything else. Um, for you, mean you want advice from what we do? I think um, the way I see it right now, it's um, it's an emerging role, and I, I work with it in the, within the tech industry, so it's an emerging role and an emerging industry, um, and we have a lot to create, okay? So uh, we have an opportunity. So if you are um, into creating things, or maybe challenging the way things are being done, I think it's a great opportunity because this is where you can stand out and uh, actually provide something, not to only to your role, to your company, to your team, but also to, to the industry as a whole, because everyone is thinking about what customer success is, what's the future of a customer success, and what we can, how we can, you know, attract the best talent and retain the best talent in this in this role. Thanks, Wissam. So my advice uh, would be: um, I didn't know that this um, role exists one year ago. Um, someone proposed it to me, and I said, "Why not?" Because it was, in fact, before I was. Um, leading the digital workplace for a big company in France. And now I am uh, helping those people. So um, the idea is that CSM uh, is uh, a coaching role. The posture is to be a little bit an advisor, a trusted advisor, a coach, and being able to understand the business, what they are doing, if they are HR, marketing, communication, understand what they are going to what they are leaving and answer and try to find an answer not try but find an answer uh, build up an, uh, an answer set up an answer using all the, um, the the means you have at your disposal in the company so the marketing teams the technical teams uh, the sales teams the training teams the idea is you're a little bit the chef d'orchestre um, and trying to uh, pull out a vision for your customer and, um, and helping and trying to lead this uh, virtuous cycle uh, that it's starting with some success, small successes, and then putting up a vision with your customer to make it happen and not just on a project mode, but switch to a run mode what is the uh, the team that you're going to set with your uh, inside your customer that is going to run this change on a very sustainable way so csm is just incredible role because you're uh, entering the game looking where your customer is standing and um, being a real support for him to reach the different levels thanks uh, do you want to it's going to be hard after you. Your answer was perfect. <laughs> uh, so yeah, ju just to, to add on, um, what I advise, because I, I like and I tend to talk to a lot of people uh, within this company or outside um, about the customer success role, uh, it's really important to understand that it's not just a role of troubleshooting something or to just have the client uh, understand something and uh, at some point is to 
it's, it's way more broad. Like, let's say you have an, if you don't really know what you want to do later on, you can start by a customer success role because you get to have a touch point with every single team. You get to have more impact on the product, on the marketing side, the PMM, for example, doing all the content, uh, the guide, um, uh, the CSM operation that I was telling you about, uh, diving into the metrics, uh, uh, anything else, uh, escalate to a more leaders leadership uh, oriented role. So uh, definitely don't limit your vision of uh, customer success to just helping at some point the customer, just guiding um, the customers. And internally speaking is to act as a voice of the customer within the company and to make all the other department and team you're working with aware that they are building a tool, selling a service for someone that they're gonna use it. So yeah. Thanks a lot. And I'll share my own experience. Uh, for me, great customer success managers are first and foremost really passionate about helping others. They're coaches. I really like that image as well. Um, they need to be great listeners and also great communicators so that they can be the bridge between customers and product and other teams internally. There is project management involved. Um, coordination, uh, analytical skills, like it's its really quite rich. And as we Sam said, um, I, f I feel like um, the role helps you build skills that uh, open up a lot of opportunities later on. So again, I'm not biased at all, <laughs> but uh, I really feel like it's a, it's a very interesting role. So now if we can just use uh, Julie, the, um, we call it the, the, yeah, the, mic, the boombox or <laughs> something like this. Um, Julie's going to pass it around to whoever wants to ask a question. So please raise your hand if you have one. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you very much for uh, talking today. That was very interesting. I just had a very basic question about the customer success role in itself. So in the sales team today, you have the pre-sales, the sales, the customer success, uh, the support team even. Where does the job of a customer success stops and, s and ends? I mean, does the customer success do sales? Does he do upsells? Or does he only stay in the product and in the more of the advisement of the client. So usually I feel like the line is very blurry. You don't know where to start and where to end. So I would like to see what's your take on that. Thank you. Thanks, great question. Who would like to take it? Yeah, I, it's a great question. And again, um, I think depending on the company, the lines and roles and responsibility might differ, might, might be different. Uh, at, at LinkedIn, customer success starts um, slightly before closing a deal, because we want to make sure that everything is set up for success. So we start slightly before that, and it never stops. <laughs> because we, we uh, actually our work is to make sure that the client is retained, so we retain clients, and the sales can upsell and create growth. Uh, so it never stops, because we assume and we hope that once we sign a, acquire a new client, they will stay with us. Um, now, we don't do selling, we don't sell, we don't have quotas, we are not incentivized on the numbers of, uh, of you know, of dollar values or, or euro values, but we contribute to sales because without retention, without a happy customer, without a successful customer, um, the sell or the renewal will be extremely difficult. So at Microsoft, it is uh, slightly the same. Uh, we are uh, at the customer just before he signs so that we set all the success uh, topics as, for example, uh, engaging sponsors and uh, explaining uh, what is going to be the journey. But uh, on the sales part, we are not selling. We have no KPIs on uh, the sales. We are not incentives on that. But what is interesting is that, uh, as what I was saying later on, is that more and more we are engaged on the opportunities phase because we have good level of, uh, of, um, of uh, connect connection with a uh, high sponsorship level. And uh, so when those people are have a, 
uh, have a request uh, for a new product in Microsoft, uh, the CSM now will be there because he knows that then he will be engaged on the adoption side. So he is also uh, on the, he's at some meetings so that he can really understand why the customer is going to buy this new product, what he's going to do with it, and then he will continue the journey with the customer when the sales team has been selling the product. So we are more and more uh, working with the sales teams and more and more also uh, with the technical uh, people, engineering teams, uh, on um, uh, with the feedbacks on the new features that the customers would need. So uh, more and more we're working with them. We have special ses sessions on major accounts where we give our feedbacks on, on, the, on the blockers uh, and on the new features they would like to see. Cool. So we, we influence the roadmap. We can go on to the next question. Um, do you mind passing the mic? Thank you. Uh, Roland Garros. <laughs> Bonjour à tous. J'ai une question, même peut-être plusieurs, mais une question. Um, imaginons qu'il y a un incident majeur. Quel est votre rôle ou est-ce que vous rentrez dans des escalades, etc. Voilà, ça, j'aimerais bien connaître un petit peu plus euh, votre rôle quand ça ne va pas. Okay. Voilà, so the question, yeah, so just to repeat the question. Oh, sorry, I didn't, oh, sorry, I spoke <laughs> it okay. in, I we said it in French. Sometimes Maybe I don't me, realize either let me say it in whether English. it's English or French. In English, okay. But uh, the question was, if there's a big issue, how is customer success involved? Um, if there is, sorry, if there is a major incident, wha what is your role exactly? In on the product? On the product, on in the um, escalation, also when you jump in, when you jump out. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay, so I will give you my view on this, um, and I think we mentioned this: customer success is not customer support, so we will not be involved, like deeply involved in uh, resolving issues or technical issues like this. But we are at the forefront of client relationships, so they most of the time contact us first. And then we can reroute to the right team. Mm -hmm. We can follow up. We can make sure that you know the client is happy, the issue is resolved, but we don't resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, then once you see that a product has to be improved and so on, I imagine that you follow up uh, the actions to improve. Uh, it was mentioned product. also, I think, by right. everyone, the, mm -hmm. the feedback, loop feedback loop on yes. the product team. Yes, yeah. of course, we, we provide this. Uh, now, we, we should keep, at least at LinkedIn, you sh we should keep in mind that um, the product team has their roadmap, their priorities. They will prioritize depending on what is best for the vision of the company, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we can provide feedback. We make sure that the client knows that we did this. And even at LinkedIn, we give them the opportunity to provide feedback directly. It doesn't mean that it will be put in place. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you can pass on the mic behind you. Um, so I have actually two questions in one. Sorry about that. Uh, the first question is linked to what you said at the beginning of the presentation. Um, basically, um, acquiring customers is seven times more costly than retaining customer. And also to jump back on what you just said right now, it seems that customer uh, success manager is more and more responsible in the whole process of the company because you go to speak together with the salesman uh, to the clients during the pre-sales phases, and then you follow up all the relationship, you even influence the roadmap. So it's quite surprising to me to, uh, her to hear that none of you guys are compensated on the efforts you provide and the value you bring to your own company. So I'm... Um, I really think it's a key uh, topic in the future of uh, customer success manager uh, jobs because it might create frustration, especially with the sales team. So what's your opinion about it? Right. So you're surprised that we're not incentivized on the revenue. Uh, that exactly, that you generate. Generated. Okay. So this is uh, part of a discussion. Uh, 
in a lot of companies, not only in Microsoft. It's the, it's the way the role of the CSM can evaluate. Uh, and, but why not? But we're not sales. And uh, this is why also we have this very, very uh, uh, close uh, relationship with the customer and that it can bring a good, uh, good deals to our company is that they trust what we, uh, what we say because we can, we are not sales. So I this is even also... When you, even when you allow uh, upgrades and, uh, of plan, for example, or up sales, in this case, you just pass the ball back to the sales guys and you get commissioned on it. <laughs> yeah. Hello, so I'm Veronique Ricovene. I'm head of uh, customer success for Worldwide at Algolia. I can ask you, I can, uh, I can answer this question. In fact, you cannot be judge and advocate. Mm -hmm. If you are compensated on selling and, and you are providing an, uh, an advice to a customer, is for his success or your incentive? So that's why, from my perspective, I'm not going to incentive my, uh, my CSM on selling, but on customer satisfaction, customer intimacy, that are going to renew their accounts, and they are going to be able to upsell. And the upsell is for customer success, is not for their incentive. So that's why we are going to, to incentive them on upsell, never on sell. On the salary then? Yeah, of course, okay. of course, at the end. Okay, cool, <laughs> thank you. And just a quick, well, no, I will pass the boys. I, I just had uh, another question, um, more uh, related to uh, the fact that in growing startup, usually the CEO and the management team is really focused on sales, mm -hmm. get contracts, generating uh, value for the company, and product, make sure uh, what we sell is actually what we can do on the product. And very often, I notice that customer success department is somehow forgotten by the management team. So I guess there is a bit of coaching also to be done close to the CEOs when the startup is starting to grow. And I would like to know how we can manage this at all level. I can give, mm, I can give you my point of view because I was, I was working at Microsoft previously at Salesforce also. So you're right, because we do, not need to, we do not need to put silos in place. So that's why here we are very, very lucky at Algolia, because we are part of the revenue team. So the, we are working globally and closely with all the salespeople. At Microsoft, it's a uh, silo. <laughs> Sorry, Ines. <laughs> uh, it's still a silo, because... It's yes, for it's a, a better a customer satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> we can discuss on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, in fact, and, and, and it's not something new, as, uh, as uh, already said, uh, when you are creating a customer success uh, uh, organization, you just should be on track with, your, with the vision of the company. And from my perspective and my experience, uh, we should be part of the, of the revenue team, working very, very closely with the product team. Uh, we probably have time for one more question. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, the, the mic is already given. Yeah. Thank you for uh, very we interesting have time discussion. After for to chat individually. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I have a question about uh, international and uh, multi languages uh, customer success uh, system. Uh, when a company goes to other markets, uh, they, uh, um, this company have, uh, has uh, some ways of uh, building of customer success. Uh, for example, they can uh, create a local representative, uh, com like uh, Microsoft, I know in each country we have uh, Microsoft uh, corporation representatives. Mm -hmm. Or a uh, company uh, could use uh, some uh, technical tools, for example, artificial intelligence, bots or something else. Uh, and uh, any of ways uh, has a plus and minus, uh, and it's a very different right. choice always. So how do we handle I, yeah, customer success for di for customers in different countries? Yeah, b because uh, local representatives, it could be very expensive, for example, for the start. Uh, 
in your opinion, in your mind, uh, which way is the best and why in your companies, maybe? Uh, which way between having a local yeah. representative yeah. or someone central? Yeah. Okay. So in Microsoft, we are uh, global. F so on my three major accounts, I act as a global representative. So um, w uh, I fly a lot. I go and see my different uh, customers around the world. And some of them uh, want a native speaker. So um, I will not be able to make a training or uh, to have a big session in French or in English. Uh, they will uh, ask for Japanese, Chinese, uh, and we have to listen to that. So um, we uh, can have someone from the Microsoft Office coming with us, uh, or we can also have a partner coming with us. So we are very, very, um, uh, how can we say, conscious on those topics, the language and the culture. So it's a mix of a global representative and sometimes using local people yeah. to help you. Wissam, do you want to add? So I, I think just maybe one point. Um, if we do not have a local presence, it doesn't mean that we cannot service or work with the client. Uh, most of the time it's done in, in what we call hubs or regional hubs uh, with people who can speak the language. And we can leverage technology to, you know, to make sure that the client has the service level that they need to have. Okay, let's let's go for one last question. Cool. Uh, just for the benefit of people that might want to pursue uh, customer success, and I think it comes across. Um, you guys, I'll stand up. Uh, it comes. Uh, it comes across. Um, you guys having the role of uh, making sure that net promoting score is high, the adoption of the tool uh, and the and the features is being is being taken taken on and the opportunities for upgrades or um, upsells are, are there. Um, one thing that you might come across and also champion building, you, you are part of, part of one of the critical assets to make sure that there is champion building. Um, you, you know, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning that today is very easy to switch to another, to another tool very quickly. Uh, and that mainly comes from the ins uh, from inside. Someone joined the company, has worked uh, and uh, and has worked with a different tool in a different company. How do you address the disruption of one new employee that is trying to change the way of doing things and tr trying to change what when you don't have a strong champion in 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 house uh, and you're just having someone trying to disrupt what what you have there and why the person your previous champion left the company already. So um, we observe that uh, in all the companies, uh, the two departments are a little bit disruptive. It's the innovation uh, department and the chief digital office. They are using a lot of uh, tools because they are testing. And they are a little bit like startups. They are in a very agile mode. So um, they don't really want to follow the company guidelines. And you also have other, uh, for example, the, the um, uh, subsidiaries are some uh, in some countries or some that are not 100% owned by the company. They can also uh, decide whether they are going to follow the main rules or not. So sometimes we are facing competition uh, context and uh, we have uh, so we have we have to build a kind of strategy to in fact um, uh, try to find the good use cases and to make understand to 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 have some people that are going to uh, empower uh, Microsoft and and make the other and the company that are a little bit against make them understand why they should be working on our products. But so we have a kind of competition work plan to put in place uh, with people with people inside the company so that we can really leverage the benefit of all using the same tools. Mm -hmm. And so I think you had the answer, which is about ha building uh, and, and creating champions within the company so that they can advocate and make sure that the company doesn't decide to switch to another solution. Yeah, uh, my, my question was just that um, if your champion is gone, uh, at that stage, what do you do? This is actually, it's a great question, and this <laughs> is part of what we try to sell in, in yeah. our business at LinkedIn. Um, decision, like decision makers are rarely doing 
or making decisions alone. Um, so we talk about a buying committee. We have more than 10 people involved, everything. So um, this, this means that we need to build relationships with more than one person. Mm -hmm. yeah. And customer success, so sales team, of course, will do this. And uh, funnily enough is that a recent study by LinkedIn, actually launched um, two days ago, uh, shows that customer success managers are six times more connected to decision makers compared to salespeople. So we have a great role in you know, building these relationships that will maximize the, or secure um, or reduce the, the risk on these uh, situations. Great, thank you I so much. I knew you the answer, which is for the benefit of everyone. But <laughs> great answer, thank you. Thank you so much. I want to be conscious of time. Um, I hope you, you enjoyed the conversation. Uh, for those who still have questions, um, a couple of us will still be around for, for 15 minutes. And for others, I wish you a great afternoon. Thanks again for joining, and we'll share news about the next one. <laughs>